Hello friends, welcome to Electronic Forum. Today we are going to discuss about the superposition theorem. So, first of all, what is superposition theorem? The total current flowing through any part of a linear bilateral passive network having more than one sources is equal to the algebraic sum of the currents produced by each sources separately. So, where to apply a superposition theorem? In order to apply a superposition theorem, the network must be linear, bilateral and passive. So, what is linear network? The system is said to be linear if it follows the relation y equal to mx. That means, if v increases, i also increases in the proportions. What is bilateral? Bilateral means when element properties and characteristics are independent of direction of current, then the element is bidirectional. In simple language, current can flow in both the directions. Is called bilateral network. Passive means the element which consumes energy is called passive networks and the element which supplies energy is called active network. So, to apply a superposition theorem, the circuits must be linear, bilateral and passive. Second, all the sources are independent and last, more than one sources are present. If the given circuit satisfied all the three conditions, then we will go for superposition theorem in order to find the current through each and every branches. So, what is the procedure for applying a superposition theorem? Circuit must have only independent sources. Second, only one source is to be active at a time and last, remove all the voltage sources by short circuit and all current sources is replaced by open circuit. Now, let us explain the same superposition theorem with an example given below. From this figure, it is clear that the overall network is linear, bilateral and passive because all the elements are resistive in nature. All the sources are independent. Here we are having two voltage sources that is 12 volt and 5 voltage and both the voltage sources does not depend on any value. That means more than one sources are present. So, we will go for the superposition theorem for finding the current through each and every branches. That is the current I1 double dash, I2 double dash and I3 double dash through the branches R1, R2 and R3 respectively. Respectively. Step 1, initially 5 volt DC source to be active and here the other voltage sources that means 12 volt DC source is replaced by short circuit. If you are having a current source, it can be replaced by an open circuit. Now applying KVL and KCL in different loops for finding the current I1, I2 and I3 through R1, R2 and R3 branches respectively. Applying KVL in loop 1, here we are having two loops, loop 1 and loop 2. A, B, E and F forms loop 1 and A, B, C, D, E and F forms loop 2. So applying KVL in loop 2 will get the equation number 1. Applying KVL in loop 2 will get the equation number 2 and applying KVL, KCL at node 1 that is I3 equals to I1 plus I2. So, here we are having a 3 unknowns I1, I2 and I3 and in order to find the 3 unknowns we get 3 equations and solving all the 3 equations we will get the different values of I1, I2 and I3 as mentioned in the slides. Now, we will go for the second step that 12 volt DC source to be active and 5 volt DC source is replaced by a short circuit. Now applying KVL and KCL in different loops. Here we are also having a two loops, loop 3 and loop 4. So CBED forms loop 3 and CBAFED forms loop 2. So applying KVL and KCL in different loops for finding the currents I1 dash, I2 dash and I3 dash through branches R1, R2 and R3 respectively. In this figure, we are having two loops, so applying KVL in loop will get the equation number 4. Applying KVL in loop 2 will get equation number 5 and applying KCL at node 2 will get equation number 6. And all solving all the three equations will get the different values of I1, I2 and I3. So from this figure, from this figure it is clear that I1 dash is in opposite direction with I1, I3 dash is in opposite direction with I3 and I2 dash is in the same direction with I2. So, in order to find the net current flowing through the branches R1, R2 and R3, we will go for the algebraic sum and we will get the different values of the current I1 double dash, I2 double dash and I3 double dash through the branches R1, R2 and R3 respectively. As we have mentioned in the equation number 7, 8 and 9. So, we will get the different 
different current flowing through the different branches. Now we are going to verify the same circuit practically by using superposition theorem. For conducting the superposition theorem, the apparatus we need is DC circuit training system, second DC power supply, set of wires, ammeter and a voltmeter. In this figure, we are having 2 voltage source, 12 volt DC and 5 volt DC. An ammeter having maximum range of 250 mA for measuring current through different branches and 2 voltage having maximum range of 15 volt and 5 volt for measuring different voltages across the branches. In order to apply a superposition theorem, only one source to be active at a time and other is replaced by a short circuit. And individual current through branches is being measured with the help of ammeter as shown in the figure. Initially, 12 volt DC source is active. So we are connecting the positive lead to the positive terminal of the supply and negative lead to the negative terminal of the supply. Here the voltmeter is used to measure the supply voltage that is 12 volt. Now connecting an ammeter with a correct polarity to measure the current through branches R1. In this figure we are having 3 ammeter connections for measuring the current through each branches but we are having certain limitations that we have only one ammeters so all the other ammeter connections are short circuited otherwise the circuit will not complete and current will not flow through any branches now the 5 volt DC source is short circuited now turn on the supply and we will find that the current through the branches R1 is 210 milli ampere now we have to measure the current through branches R2 so connect the ammeter in the branches R2 with correct polarity and branches R1 should be short circuited now connecting the ammeter with correct polarity and now turn on the supply and it was found that the current is 175 milliampere. Now measuring the current through branches R3. So we are short circuiting the second ammeters and connecting the third ammeters with correct polarity. And turn on the supply it was found that the pointer moves backward that means interchange the leads in order to measure the correct polarity it was found that the current is 35 milliampere now in the second case we are short circuiting at the 12 volt dc source and 5 volt dc source is active Now turn on the supply and it is visible that the pointer moves backward. That means we have to interchange the connections of the ammeters in order to measure the exact current flowing through this. So the current flowing through the R3 branches is 85 milliampere. Now we have to measure the current through R2 branches. Now connecting an ammeters in R2 branches with proper polarity. Now turn on the supply and the current flowing through R2 branches is 70 milliampere. Now we have to measure the current through R1 branches so connecting an ammeter with proper polarity and second ammeter is short circuited now turn on the supply it was found that the pointer moves backward so we are interchanging the leads and it was found that the current is 15 milliamperes Now at last, 
both the sources to be active and find the current net current flowing through each and every branches so the pointer moves backwards so we are interchanging the leads and the net current is 195 milliampere through r1 branches now we have to measure the current through r2 branches so connecting an ammeter with the proper polarity now turn on the supply and the current is 245 milliampere now finding the current through branches r3 so connecting an ammeter with correct polarity and turn on the supply and it is found that the current is 50 milliampere so these are the practical results that we are going to verify so it was found that when 12 volt dc source is active the current flowing through the branches r1 r2 and r3 is i1 dash i2 dash and i3 dash whose value is 210 milliamperes 175 milliamperes and 35 milliamperes respectively when 5 volt dc source is active the current flowing through r1 r2 and r3 is i1 i2 and i3 whose value is 15 milliamperes 70 milliamperes and 85 milliamperes so we have to find the net current flowing through the branches r1 r2 and r3 that means the current i1 double dash i2 double dash and i3 double dash so i1 double dash is nothing but the algebraic sum of the currents i1 dash minus i1 whose value is 195 milliamperes I2 double dash is I2 dash plus I2 whose value is 245 milliamperes and I3 double dash is I3 minus I3 dash is 50 milliamperes and by the practicals we also see we have seen that when both the sources are active the net current flowing through R1, R2 and R3 is 195 milliamperes, 245 milliamperes and 50 milliamperes so both the results being matched so, so the superposition theorem can be verified thanks for watching